Hi everyone, in today's video, we're going to learn how to use file object and its methods and its properties. So if you're interested in this topic, please continue watching. Welcome back, let's get started. So file object is something that provides an interface to a file for input and output. File open is the function that you use to open up an object like this and it opens up a file to read a content from it or write new content to it. The syntax that you have to use in order to use this is this. So you would open up the file and assign it into a variable. File name is going to be the path. Flags are going to be either read, write, or append. And encoding is, say, for example, if you want to do Unicode 8 encoding, then that's where you put in Unicode 8. I'm going to leave that syntax up here so you can refer to it as we go through the video. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a file to check if it exists. That's the file path. Obviously, this doesn't exist. And I'm opening it in read-only mode. And I'm going to use the EaseObject function to check if this file is an object or not. And in this case, because the file does not exist, I'll get a value of zero, meaning false. If the file does exist, so in this case, I'm going to create a file first. And that file should have been created in this folder right here as test text document. And there's hello in it. Now let me just uncomment this, move file append. And I'm going to open up this file using the read only mode and go is object file. And that's going to return a value of one, meaning the file does exist. If you want to be able to write to this file, oh, by the way, you can't open up the file in read mode and try to write to it or write and try to read from it. So you've got to pick the right mode for your operation. So here I'm trying to write to this file, a new line of text followed by a line break. So if I go ahead and run this, it will have written to this file. And as you can see, my previous string of hello has been overwritten by the right command, which uh, creates a new file if it doesn't exist, but it overrides any existing files if it does exist. So it overwrote my previous file and put in this text new line of text with a line break at the end. If you therefore want to instead add more text to an existing file or append to it, you use the append mode. And here I've got the reference in the file string one string two, string three, all of which I'm going to append to the test text file. And this time I'm going to skip assigning file open to a variable entirely. That's actually not advisable because you can't close the file out because you don't have any reference to this file. And therefore that's going to be lingering around your memory. Um, but I'm just going to show you how this still works. Even if you don't assign the file open functions resulting to a variable. And so I'm doing that with an append mode and I'm going to write to it string one line break string two line break string three. And if I go ahead and run it, then I will have the previous line intact like that. And then we'll have the three lines of text added afterwards. Now note the difference between file write and file append is that file write is faster because it opens up the file once and it doesn't close it until you ask it to close it. Whereas file append, the file append command, will open up the file, write a text to it, and then close out of it when the command is done. So if you do say for loop, a file append multiple times, every single loop, you're going to open up the file and reclose it. So that's gonna take a bit more time as compared to when you use the file open to open it once and file close to close it once. And so I just delete this and run this. Then what this is going to do is it's going to create a test file and then add from numbers one to 100 separated by line breaks like that. And that was pretty quick. 
And this example is too small for you to be able to notice the difference, but you can also use Filepan to do the same. So if I go ahead and run it, it created it. It's pretty instant as well. So this file is too small to make a comparison, but if you are dealing with a larger file size, then perhaps you're going to start to feel the difference in the time taken to create the file. And now if you want to be able to read the file, then let me just bring the file back and edit this to text, text. And so I'm opening this up with the read only mode and I'm doing a file read to read the content. So if I go ahead and run it, then I'll see the numbers from uh, one to 100 being read out like that. So that's how you read the, the file content in the entirety. If you just want to read part of the file content, um, say you want to read the first nine characters and then the next five characters, I'm just going to delete this file and recreate one. So in this file, I have numbers from one to nine, followed by alphabet letters, A, B, C, D to K. And so what I'm going to do is comment this out and read the first nine characters using file read. So if you put in a number here, then that's going to point to the number of characters you want to read. And then that will advance your file pointer to the 10th character. So you will have read this bit and then your file pointer is going to be at this position. And when you read the next five characters, you're going to be reading A, B, C, D, E. And that's what this is going to do. So if I go ahead and run it, then I'm going to see one to nine followed by A to E like that. So that's how you read a part of the file. If you want to be able to read the entire lines, then you can do something like this where I'm just going to create a new file for the example. Let's just go ahead and create this. And that's my example so where I have my first line, second line and third line. So I'm just go ahead and move this file of pen command. And so I'm going to open up the file and I'm going into a loop to read all three lines. And if I do file read line, that means I'm going to read the first line and put the pointer to the beginning of the second line. File position is going to read out the position of the pointer, and that's going to be the number of characters from the beginning to this point. And that's going to show me a number that represents a position of this position. And then in the next iteration of the loop, I'm going to read the same. I'm going to do the read line command or read line function, and then read the second line, put my position to here, and then display the position, so on and so forth. File tail is the same as file position. So I'm going to see the same result here at the end with from this message box. So if I go ahead and run it, then this is going to read the first line. And my pointer is going to be placed here after I read the first line. If I hit OK, then I'm going to get a number which represents that position, which is done by file position. And the next one is going to be reading the next line. And again, the position after reading the, the second line. And then the third line. And then that's the last position within the file, which is going to be the same as file.tell, which shows us the current position. All right. And there are some other methods and properties available for you to test out and use. And all of them can be found in this documentation on AutoHockey website. And I'm going to show you a couple of them. Let me go ahead. Actually, just let me bring it back. See what's inside. Okay. So this one, I'm going to, maybe I can do a append. And I'm going to do a right line instead of right. So, so far, I've just been doing right. Right line just basically means you write the line and then put a line break afterwards. So you don't have to go hello, back tick N. So right line all of these, and then at the end, I'm going to have right next time. And therefore, all of these are going to be separated out by line breaks um, other than this one. So I'm going to have the next time line at the end without a line break afterwards. Actually, let me just do a W to overwrite this. If I go ahead and run it, then I'm going to see 
hello first, line break, because it's the right line. There, see you next time. This is written with the right function, and therefore I don't see any, I don't see any line break afterwards. There is what's also called file seek, which allows you to move the file pointer to wherever you want. So that's the function. And here I've got the reference in the file. So right now I'm going to use this file. Let me move it here. When I open up the file, I'm going to read the first five characters, which is going to be hello. And then I'm doing a file seek. Seven means I want to move forward by seven characters from the current position. So one is this, so it's current position of the file pointer. So when I read the first five characters, my position of the pointer will be here and I'm moving forward by seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's going to put my pointer at this position and it's going to then read the line which is CU. Afterwards, it's going to go backwards by 14 positions or 14 characters from the current position. So after I read the line CU, my position of the pointer is going to be here because I've read the entire line. So I've moved on to the next line and 14 characters before this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 here. And therefore, when I read six characters from this point, it's going to be the word there. And then I'm going to seek backwards by four characters from the end of the file. That's going to be here. One, two, three, four. And read the entire line. And this is just going to read time because my position is here. It's not going to read next time, the entire line, but it's just going to read time, which is the position of my pointer. And then afterwards, I'm going to move all the way to the beginning of the file and then read the line, which is going to give me hello again. So let me go ahead and run it. And I get hello, which is the first five characters being read. And then afterwards, I'll get see you, which is the result of me having sought forward by seven characters and reading the line. And then I'm moving backwards by 14 characters and reading the six characters, which is going to be this. And then I'm moving four characters backwards from the end of file. And therefore, that's going to be time. And I'm reading the entire line starting from here. And then I'm going to move all the way back to the beginning of the file, as you can see here, and read the entire line, which is going to give me hello. So that's how you seek backwards and forwards within a file. Now, if you want to be able to uh, calculate the size of the file in bytes, according to the AutoHockey documentation, this is in bytes. But what I found out was that it might actually have to do more with the number of characters. So let me just go ahead and delete all this and leave just hello. So that's going to be five characters. If I go ahead and run this using file length, having that displayed in message box, then I get number five. Now let me just go ahead and add three more characters of one to three, hit save, and then run it. Then I get a number of eight, which I think represents the number of characters. If I go ahead and add maybe uh, two special characters like that, and then run it, I'll get a value of 10. So I think that represents the number of characters instead of bytes, but the documentation says it's bytes. You can also set the size to a file by assigning a value to file.length. And what this is going to do is, let me just delete this and run it again. Then you will be able to see that the file size is bigger than one kilobyte. And when I open it up, I'll see a lot of spaces. I think these are space characters. Many rows of them, as you can see. And that's going to be the number of space characters. So if I go back to check what's the length of the file, I should be seeing 
a hundred thousand a hundred thousand characters because I've added a hundred thousand like that I can also use the file read command to try and read this file to see how many characters they are using str length and I'm getting 99,999 I don't know where the missing last character is but as you can see by assigning a value to file length you can actually change the the size of the file by adding spaces so I can actually go um, add another zero here and that's going to make the file a lot bigger as you can see it's 977 kilobytes now if I open it up it's going to take a little bit of time it did open it and there's going to be again lots of spaces 10 times more than before now if you want to check whether your file pointer is at the end of file and that's the acronym for end of file at eof what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete this and create a new file and the new file has just a value hello and what i'm going to do is i'm going to open up this file in read only mode and i'm going to check whether this file is at the end of file or the pointer is at the end of the file. So when I just open it up, my pointer is going to be at the beginning of the file, not at the end of the file. And therefore, this is going to return a value of zero, meaning false. Am I at the end of the file? No. And therefore zero. And I'm going to do file read. I'm not going to display that out, but I'm just going to do it. And five characters is going to put me at the end of the file. And so that's going to return a value of one, meaning true. If I do a file seek to go backwards by one character from the current position, it's going to put my file pointer to this position. And if I do a file and a file from that point, I'm going to get a value of zero, meaning false. And then if I go all the way to the last position, so zero comma two means I'm going to the last position and check out whether I'm at the end of file then this is going to return a value of one meaning true. So if I go ahead and run it, initially I opened the file up, checked whether I'm at the end of file, false. Then I read the first five characters, which is going to put my pointer to the end of file. And therefore I get a value of one. And I'll seek backwards from that point by one character. And therefore I'm not anymore at the end of the file. And then I'll do seek go all the way to the back of the file and therefore I'm going to see number one meaning I am back at the end of the file now if you want to be able to check the file encoding of the file then you can use file.encoding and so if I go ahead and run this I'll get a value of cp1252 which is the encoding code for this test.txt cp means code page and you can get more information on this from this website. So let me just go ahead and open up the website. And if I go to 1252, then I'm going to be able to see that the encoding for this test text file is NC Latin 1 Western European. If you're going to be able to write to the file in a different encoding like Unicode to be able to write foreign language into it, you can uh, fill out the encoding parameter in this manner and this is hello in Korean and so in this case if I go ahead and run it then I should be able to write the foreign language into the notepad like that you can also use the file encoding command utf8 which will affect all the file open functions afterwards in order to write in Unicode as well this is it for today's video thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video Let's go!